happy weekend. In today's vlog, I'm gonna chat with you guys about retinoids today, common questions that I've been getting. I'm also gonna bake up my uh, protein muffins this morning. I love having those on hand. I'm gonna run errands and um, yeah, I don't know what else I'm gonna get into. Anyways, one question I keep getting over and over again about using uh, retinoids, whether it be adapalene or prescription tretinoin, is on whether or not you can combine or use together a retinoid and azelaic acid. You can. Azelaic acid, as a reminder, is an ingredient that is helpful for acne. It's also helpful for hyperpigmentation and for rosacea. It's anti-inflammatory, and it's generally very easy to tolerate. It can be a drying. Um, and it can be used alongside any ingredient. You don't have to worry about it. Compromising the stability of another ingredient, uh, causing excessive irritation, although honestly, anything can cause irritation, so just have that in mind. But yeah, you can use them together, it's okay. Like azelaic acid, you can use up to twice a day, so you can use it morning, evening. If you use it in the evening, along with tretinoin, for example, or any other retinoid, um, then it, you just put them on, you know, one after the other. The order does not matter whatsoever. So don't don't get hung up on those kind of little minutia details. All right, I'm gonna throw together my uh, protein muffins that I have been jiving on. I love making these like on the weekend to have throughout the week. <gasps> One thing that I recently did though that was a game changer. You guys know I make oat flour from whole rolled oats, and I've been just doing it as as needed when I make a recipe. I, and so I spent a little bit of time in bulk ground up whole rolled oats to have oat flour on hand so I don't have to do that step every time. Uh, yeah, I'll put the recipe for this down below in the description box, but I'm going to be using the Four Sigmatic plant-based protein, the sweet vanilla flavor. Um, Four Sigmatic is sponsoring this portion of today's video. You guys know I'm a huge fan of their coffee and I love their plant-based protein. Um, like they've got an unflavored version if you like to have proteins that don't have any flavor. Uh, they've also got a chocolate one that's really good, a peanut butter one that's delicious, and I've really been jiving on the sweet vanilla one because it's got real vanilla in it, not like some fake vanilla flavor. There's no artificial flavor, it's 100% organic, it's vegan, grain free if you need to be, gluten free if you need to be and there's like no fillers or anything. You know, a lot of people have trouble digesting protein powders because they put a lot of fillers in them. Things like xanthan gum and whatnot. This doesn't have that. Um, it's just protein powder and like coconut milk powder plus um, adaptogens, uh, the adaptogen mushrooms. No, this does not taste like mushrooms, but it just adds an extra boost of nutrients and antioxidants, minerals, vitamins, etc. And honestly, I really think it's part of what makes this protein powder so good is that mushroom, similar to their coffees, the mushroom just kind of enhances the flavor profile and also the overall consistency. But in general, I prefer to have protein powders of like a mix of different proteins, um, vegan proteins, as opposed to just pea. This has pea, hemp seed, chia, pumpkin, and coconut. I, and I, I find personally having a blend of the different types of plant-based proteins really keeps it from being chalky and unpalatable. So I adore it. And like I said, there's no fillers, no gums, no nothing. And I'm gonna do a whole teaspoon of baking powder. And I finally transferred my baking soda to a little jar, much easier than that annoying box. Is it just me or is the baking soda box like the most annoying thing? Um, I wish baking soda came in a container like baking powder instead of that awful box. It's always like, it inevitably gets like a little leak in it too at the bottom. Have you guys noticed that? And I'll just like slow release baking soda all over the place. So annoying. And then I'm gonna do two scoops of the sweet vanilla protein. If you guys click the link in the description box, um, you can get 10% off of this protein powder or anything on the entire Four Sigmatic site. Highly recommend their mushroom coffee. As a matter of fact, I have some of the little instant packets here that I like to have for a pinch. But yeah, 
Uh, you can get 10% off of your order site-wide. Plus, if you stock up, spend $100 or more, you can get free shipping. Um, so yeah, the sweet vanilla is really good. Highly recommend it. It's delicious and like smoothies. Um, and I love baking with it. I'm just gonna use a little fork here to blend all the dry ingredients. And the other thing about Four Sigmatic too is that they independently lab test their products. You don't have to worry about any like contaminants in the protein powder. That's like a thing, you know. Um, some protein powders, they can, they end up being like when labs go in and test them, they have like heavy metals or something bizarre. And you're like, whoa, what's that doing to my protein? No, this is free of that mystery meat. <laughs> All right, and then I'm just gonna blend together my liquid ingredients. Now, if you don't like bananas, you can do applesauce, you can do um, canned pumpkin, I mean, you can do you. I'm gonna do six tablespoons of almond milk. These little beakers, they were an Amazon win. They're so handy. Cause like I said, I don't like, that's my oven. I don't like measuring liquids in spoons. I just find that annoying. Little spoon of vanilla. Plus, you can stack liquids in the same beaker. Like, I'm gonna do a tablespoon of vanilla extract, and I'm gonna do a tablespoon of ACV. Boom. So I don't have to dirty another one. Yeah, you can add a little bit of sweetener to this if you want to. Sometimes I do monk fruit, but honestly, with the banana plus the Four Sigmatic protein, it's sweet as is. Four Sigmatic doesn't have any artificial sweeteners in it. It's sweetened with um, just a little bit of coconut sugar and maple syrup powder. Um, so it's pretty low in sugar overall, and it gives a nice sweetness. These protein muffins, they're not dry or chalky whatsoever. Boom, they are all done. You guys, these are so good. Um, I especially love them with the banana. Uh, so yeah, definitely check out Four Sigmatic. You can use my um, link in the description box and automatically at checkout, it will apply 10% off the protein powder or any order site wide. And again, if you spend over $100, you'll get free shipping. Well, hey guys, I'm on my way out to run errands. I'm wearing my new watch from the FabFitFun box which is also where these sunglasses came from, by the way. Um, I'm kind of liking it. I'm glad I went, I'm, I'm glad I selected it, except I didn't put it as tight as I probably should have. Anyways, how are you guys? It is gray and cloudy. It might actually rain today. Uh, so right now, Different has their annual retinoid education week going on. It's like a campaign to educate consumers about retinoids. And I'm working with them over on my Instagram, but I wanted to share it with you guys here um, because I think it's pretty cool. They came out with this app called the Clear 90 app. And it's basically like a little app that you can use along with using different that has like reminders built in. I think it's totally free. I th think um, it's got reminders like put your different on it has little tips and it also has uh, a way for you to track your progress through it's called clear 90 because it takes you through the first 90 days see most people they you know they might not realize that it takes time for different to start working and so they you know they bail on it they either think that it's an overnight success is gonna happen um, you know it takes time so it, it kind of takes you through and I think you can document photo uh, with photographs your progress and like I said it's got tips and it also has um, a way to get rewards through with Amazon coupons which is kind of cool and so I thought that was really neat I wanted to share with you guys I know a lot of you all use different um, but uh, yeah 
think that's really neat. Different, you know, it's the only, Adapalene is the only FD, FDA approved over-the-counter retinoid. And retinoids are very different than any other. Why are you stopping, lady? You don't have a stop sign. Retinoids are very different than any other over-the-counter acne treatment. They work very differently. Um, and the other thing about retinoids is people, you know, I, I get some common questions about retinoids. I've got a whole video on, you know, myths about retinoids. But one that I seem to, like, I don't know who's putting this out there. The idea that you have to wash retinoids off the following morning. Like, no. I mean, the only reason to do that is because, you know, maybe when you're first starting out, you want to do a short contact time to reduce your irritation but even that like with different come on it's like the easiest to tolerate retinoid I mean it was basically designed to minimize irritation so there's just like really no need to do that um, so I get that question a lot and then a lot of people um, are under the misconception that you use it as a spot treatment like I saw somebody I saw somebody I think on YouTube or whatever they're like this is different gel and I'm getting a pimple so I just use this whenever I'm getting a pimple as a spot treatment. No, it's not a spot treatment. Like it's not going to work at all that way. Um, it has to be on board and it will treat existing breakouts but it also treats you know the acne in a way that prevents breakouts from happening in the future. So you can't just use it as a spot treatment. You need to use it to a widespread area. It has a field effect um, in preventing future breakouts. Uh, you know, so you want to use it to the entire face, sparing the thin skin around the eyelids. Any retinoid, that is. Uh, it doesn't work as a spot. I mean, it simply will not work as a spot treatment. Uh, benzoyl peroxide, however, does work pretty nicely as a spot treatment to help accelerate the rate of clearance of a inflammatory acne lesion. Although, actually, as a side note, we have come to learn in recent years that all acne is inflammatory. So we're doing away with those subgroups, you know, saying distinguishing inflammatory from non-inflammatory acne. It turns out there's inflammation in all types of acne. We used to say non-inflammatory acne when there was no red papules because um, it you know, assumed that that type of acne, the comedonal type, it wasn't necessarily inflammatory, was less risky for scarring. So you could you know, start at a, your therapeutic ladder lower. But people do get scarring from comedonal acne and we have histologic evidence that there's actual inflammation there as well. So we've come to appreciate that all acne is inflammatory. And the other thing we have learned about acne in recent years is that cutie bacterium acne, the bacteria that lives in the pore and is responsible for acne, turns out there's different strains and some people are have different strain have a certain strain that makes it so that they have more likely to have acne. So whether or not you're colonized with it or not, it's not just that bacteria, it's a specific strain of it that we've learned about. So yeah, we've learned about that and uh, lots changed in the realm of acne. We've got new drugs to treat it. We've got topical antiandrogens coming down the pipeline with um, Winlevy as it's called. Um, Clascaterone, it's a mouthful. And we've got new retinoids, prescription that is. And uh, yeah, lots of stuff. Which is good because I feel like for a long, long time there was nothing new in the realm of acne treatments. I braided my hair today. I do that when I'm gonna go run errands because I don't want my hair getting in the way of my Costco game. <laughs> Uh, Walgreens. Uh, H-E-B. I don't shop at H-E-B. I feel like they're going to kick me out of Texas. I don't enjoy shopping in there. I'm a, you know, unpopular opinion. I, when I first moved here, I shopped there a fair amount. But I don't enjoy shopping there because it's always so crowded. And they don't have as many vegan options. They're like very meat and cheese centric, at least the one in my area. That's the cool thing about HEB. They change up their inventory based on location. I mean, it's really a very um, good business. 
H-E-B, like they give back to the community a lot and stuff. Anyways, yeah, I don't shop there. <laughs> One thing that annoys me about H-E-B is that they still do paper coupons, but they have them in the store, like on these little tear off things. So they want you to tear off this paper coupon and show it to the cashier and you inevitably grab more. And it's like, what a complete waste of paper that is. It's just like do like every other grocery store and have it downloaded in an app on your phone. I don't get why they do that. Maybe they've changed it, but the last time I went in an HEB, they were doing that. They do have a very good bulk bin section, although they may have done that. I assume they did away with that for the pandemic. Uh, Cause Kroger, you know, did away with their bulk bin, which actually was a good thing because I, as I've said in other videos, but if you're new here, I'm gonna reiterate it. I have seen some of shady, shady acres around those bulk bins. I mean, people just be acting like, like put their hands in there and snack in the middle of the store. It's like, what are you doing? Ruin it for everyone. Yeah, even Sprouts. Sprouts has always had a, a, a pretty extensive bulk section and these barrels that you have to scoop stuff out. But they, I went into Sprouts recently. They did away with the barrel thing. Instead, they pre-scooped everything into little baggies for you. Um, so I wonder when and if we'll ever go back to bulk vintage. That might be one of those things that we just never see again. You know, that may be phased out because of the pandemic. I mean, if you think about it, they're not, because of the way people behave, they're not the most hygienic thing. Because <laughs> people are always putting their hands in there and being nasty. Yeah, but I do enjoy, I did enjoy bulk bins because they were always a good value. And the other thing I like about bulk bins is that, say it's an ingredient that you need, you don't have to commit to an entire, like, flour. Flour is so annoying. It's so annoying. Like, a bag of flour, I mean, unless you bake a lot with flour, which I don't, um, and you know, you have a flour canister, it is annoying. And then there's like some kind of mite that gets into flour. Ugh. Yeah, I detest flour. And I much would I would much prefer to be able to just buy a quantity of flour, the amount that I needed for a given recipe, than have to commit to an entire thing of flour. It makes a mess. It's just a pain. It's just a pain. See, oatmeal is what I buy. And I'm okay having an excess of oatmeal because I eat that pretty much every day. But unless you're baking, you can't just eat flour. <laughs> flour and water. Isn't that gr what constitutes gruel? I know it's the basis for a lot of things, but yeah, I find flour annoying. <laughs> uh, we got the green arrow. We better go before somebody honks at me. Uh, Alright, I'm not allowed to buy any slinky, comfy loungewear at Costco today, you guys. I'm not allowed. Watch me do it. Watch me, watch me, watch me. Wow, isn't this a deal? $23.99, uh, $6 off. The two Kohler six liter trash cans. These are nice. Look at that, it's slow release. <laughs> uh, oh, is that Vernado? No, it's Wazoo. Wazoo, and I am not. I am not with the Dyson, but this year, if they come back, if Vornado comes back, I'm buying another one. Mark my words, because it was an award-winning purchase of 2020. The Vornado. I mean, it's judging as we speak, unattended. These are still here. A six-pack. $50 to light up the night. Costco's got Easter baskets out. Somebody already got into that one. $19.99. Must say. Seems like if you're a parent, it would be fun to put together an Easter basket. Wouldn't want to have it pre-assembled. Ooh, lemon crisp Kit Kat. I don't know. Chocolate and lemon, uh, I don't know that I support that logic, but hey, obviously there is a market for it. 
Uh, who doesn't need 60 servings of jelly beans? Just went on a run. Here, let me turn turn off tornado so you can actually hear me. I just went on a long run during my cool down walk. <clears throat> I like to get in some water, so I got in pretty much my last liter of H2O for the day. Um, and then I'll have some tea with dinner later. But uh, yeah, still adoring the treadmill. Here, let me turn it off. But <clears throat> lately, I have not been doing such a good job of trying to stretch after a, I run, so I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna go for a stretch. Um, and since I'm leaving this room, I'm gonna put Vornado back on. These are those shorts I get on Amazon that I adore. They're like perfect for hanging out in the, around the house and then going for a run. And let me just take off my indoor shoes here. feeling fresh and clean. I'm proud of myself for getting in a good stretch session. Yeah, I'm really bad about that. I need to find like on YouTube a like five minute stretch session video. That way I'll do it and you know, be done with it. Sometimes when I have to do things, work out things myself, like come up with them and do the movements for a specified amount of time, I get like, let's go, let's go, let's go. And I cheat myself of the of the stretch. So that was good that I did a good stretch. Hopefully I can keep it up. But one thing I wanted to touch on, I shampooed my hair. I'm in bad lighting, I apologize. Um, I shampooed my hair tonight as I do every night. And I've been getting questions for a while. When I go to bed at night, and you guys see I put my hair up in that silk bonnet to reduce friction. People ask me, is my hair still wet? It's not. Like the towel that I use to dry my hair, it gets my hair about 90% dry. And then I stay awake for a couple of hours after I get out of the shower. And by the time I get in bed, my hair is completely, completely dry. Um, you know, there might be, there might be like, 0.5% moisture still in my hair and I'm cool with that. So yeah, it's pretty much dry when I get when I get it, put it in the silk bonnet. And then I, I don't comb it actually until the following morning I comb my hair. So yeah, once I get out of the shower, I don't comb my hair. I just twist it, pin it up. Then when I get ready to go to bed, it's dry. I just take the clips out and pop it into the silk bonnet. And then when I wake up in the morning, I take the bonnet off and I comb out any any dead hairs. But my hair doesn't tangle, so when I wake up in the morning and comb my hair, it's not like a tangled mess. For some people's hair type, 
that method simply will not work. Um, so yeah, that's what I do. But anyways, guys, I wanted to wrap up the vlog here. Thank you for coming along with me. And don't forget, check out Four Sigmatic. You guys know I love their coffee and the protein powder is delicious in baked goods and in smoothies. So check it out. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.